Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to IGCSE Success, your one-stop shop for everything first language English. I'm back, I know less than 24 hours that I'm churning out videos like there's no tomorrow. Slight exaggeration there, but I am truly doing my best. As you can see, I'm very tired. But first of all, best of luck if you are watching this and you have your IGCSE maths tomorrow. I don't know what paper it is. Do check out the ginger the ginger mathematician gosh that's a mouthful i will link it in the description box below he is an awesome youtuber and he is killing it and of course it's english paper one on wednesday and forget all the rest right because everyone knows that english and maths are the two subjects that are going to open those doors for you just kidding <laughs> no art teachers come for me please um art teachers any teachers but let me just don my serious hat for a few seconds and just just say best of luck for all of your exams and all you can do is try your best and I've said this before you will always be more than a bunch of letters on a piece of paper and I know that's easier said than done to think that way because there's so much pressure put on you but just do your best. Anyway, on to today's video is question three, the extended writing response and it's all about creating an authentic voice. Let's go. Okay, so how to create a convincing voice for question three, the extended writing response, but also how to sustain it equally as important. But first, let's do a quick rewind of question three and why it's quite tough and why you guys need to get it right. So question three is the big non-fiction task. The smaller non-fiction task, of course, is a summary writing task worth 15 marks. This one is worth a massive 25 marks. You are required to read text C, which is always a narrative. It's always a story. And it's your job to transform this into one of the eight prescribed non-fiction text types. And they are, I've written them down this time, so I'm not having to remember. Speech, formal letter, informal letter, magazine article, journal. Why have I doubled up there? I have no idea. The importance of proofreading, guys. Magazine article, interview, newspaper report, and formal report. You need to write three equal-sized paragraphs based on the three bullet points that you are given. And your paragraph, and this is the difficult part, really. Essentially, it's, it's, it's more of a reading response, okay? You have to base your ideas on what you have read. And these need to be expressed in your own words and developed relevantly using a suitable voice, one that's appropriate, one that is sustained throughout the entire piece. Now, usually you are required to assume the role of a character. This is usually a minor character. They started doing this to, to make the paper trickier. I have no idea why. So, for example, a story could be predominantly told through the point of view of a father and then a son may make a, a fleeting appearance and you have to assume the role of that son who has pretty much been absent throughout the whole thing except saying two lines. Number seven, you need to explore both explicit and implicit ideas, really important. Number eight, you need to use a range of features. So you need to think about your vocabulary, your sentence structures devices, you know, your right forest techniques, and all of these come together to really help you establish a sense of voice and purpose. Of course, it goes without saying accuracy is very, very important for this question, and you need to be aware of the typical features of each text type. So, for example, journal writing, you would expect emotive language, a reflective tone, that first-person pronoun being used throughout newspaper report, you would expect factual language, an unbiased tone, those five W's established at the beginning, the who, what, where, when and why. So what is actually meant by voice? Well, put simply, voice is how the character communicates and expresses their ideas in your writing. You really need to think carefully about the choice of words you use, the phrases, the sentences, and any other stylistic features that you use in order to create a believable character or voice that is appropriate for the character depicted in the story. I've put here, underline, in bold, 
all of the features you use need to reflect the character you are being asked to assume. This task is not requiring you to write as yourself. You need to step into the shoes of someone else. Let's take a look at this example. You have just read a story featuring an angry mother. The task is to write a journal entry about her day. How could you show this anger? What features could you use? Well, some of them might be short, abrupt sentences, minor sentences, repetition, hyperbole, idioms, for example. Now let's take a look at some useful features. I'm sure you are aware of a ripe forest by now, the acronym that I use with all of my classes. Let's just go through a few useful techniques or features that you could try and shoehorn into your question three responses. These are very much suitable for more informal text types. So just be aware of that. So idioms, I feel under the weather, it's raining cats and dogs. By the way, don't use it's raining cats and dogs because no one actually says that. Phrasal verb, so verb coupled with a preposition, the meaning changes. Let's catch up, it's been a long time. A right forest technique, let's quickly whiz through them. Alliteration, repetition, imperatives, pronouns, emotive language, facts, opinions, rhetorical questions, exaggerations, statistics, and triplets. I do have a video with examples of each technique somewhere. You'll just have to do a bit of digging. Hyperbole, exaggeration, I've been waiting for a lifetime. Emotive language, it was heart-wrenching to see. So really thinking about your vocabulary choices. Short sentences, it's over. Humour, I know it's very subjective, but it was like listening to Justin Bieber whilst having my eyes gouged out with a rusty spoon. Sarcasm, oh great, another Monday, just what I needed to start off my week with a bang. Come to think of it, that is me every Monday, and particularly true for today. Now see if you can spot slash identify some of the features I've quickly gone over in the following model responses. They're not complete models by any means, but I've written a journal entry, informal letter, formal letter, and I think magazine article. So I've just made up this task at the top, let's read it. Imagine you are the mother from Texi, write a journal entry about your shopping trip. I can't believe the day I've had, seriously. I just got back from the shopping center and I am beyond furious, utterly furious. The crowds were unbearable and I swear everyone was out to get in my way. People were cutting me off, bumping into me and not even apologizing. What's wrong with people? And don't even get me started on the parking situation. It was a nightmare. I had to circle the parking lot three times before I finally found a spot. But that's not even the worst of it. The stores were a disaster. I had a list of things to get, but it took me twice as long as it should have because everything was out of stock. And when I finally did find what I was looking for, the lines were so long that I had to wait for what felt like an eternity. I can't believe how rude some of the store staff were too. Why are people incapable of showing even a shred of kindness these days? They didn't seem to care that I had been waiting in line for so long. And when I finally got to the front of the line, they were stuck on one speed setting. Slow, slow, slow. What a disaster. The next model response, let's read the task. So imagine you are the student from Texi. Write a letter to your friend about your feelings towards your upcoming exam. So an informal letter, I'm sure you can all relate to this. Dear John, I hope this letter finds you well. I know you have been anticipating this letter for some time. You know me, a complete worry wart. Well, I just wanted to write to you and share something that's been all consuming lately. As you know, exams are coming up soon and that I'm feeling really anxious about them. And when I say anxious, I mean it. I'm tossing and turning every single night and having nightmares about them. It's been horrible. I don't know why, but I just can't seem to shake this feeling of dread. Every time I try to study, my mind goes blank and I feel like I'm not making any progress. It's like I'm stuck in this inescapable cycle of worry and stress and I don't know how to break out of it. Any idea how to navigate this less than desirable situation I am unfortunately in? I know I shouldn't be so hard on myself, but I just can't help it. I feel like everyone else is so much better prepared than I am and that I'm going to fail miserably. Anyway, 
I just wanted to talk to someone about how I'm feeling and I knew I could count on you. You are like a fountain of knowledge, so do me a favor and help. Now we have a letter of complaint. See if you can compare the tone of this letter to the previous informal letter. And the task is, imagine you are the dad from Tech C, write a letter of complaint to the manager of a restaurant you have visited recently. Dear sir, madam, I am writing to express my deep disappointment and frustration with the experience I had at your restaurant yesterday. I had high expectations for the food and service, but unfortunately those expectations were not met. First of all, the service was incredibly slow. My party and I waited over an, over an hour for our food to arrive, and even then it was cold and undercooked. We had to send it back to the kitchen twice, which only made us even more frustrated and angry. To make matters worse, the server was rude and unhelpful. They didn't seem to care that we were unhappy with our meal, and they made no effort to apologise or make things right. Unfortunately, the experience was a complete disappointment. I was expecting a quality dining experience, but instead I was met with poor service and bland food. I am writing this letter to let you know that I will not be returning to your restaurant, and I expect to be fully compensated for what can only be described as a disastrous dining experience. And the last one is a magazine article. Imagine you have just visited Thailand, write a magazine article about your experience. So starting with a catchy title, Thailand, an unforgettable experience. Sawadee Krap, fellow travel enthusiasts, let me tell you about my recent adventure to Thailand. And boy, was it a wild ride. So whatever you do, don't turn over that page. First off, let me start by saying that I was not prepared for the heat. I arrived in Bangkok in the middle of the summer and the temperature was hotter than a habanero pepper. I thought I was going to melt into a puddle, but luckily the Thai people are experts at keeping cool. One of my favourite things about Thailand was the food. I have never tasted such delicious pad thai in my life. The flavours were so vibrant and the spices were just right. I also got to try some exotic fruits like rambutan and mangosteen that were out of this world. Another highlight of my trip was visiting the temples. They were absolutely stunning. The intricate designs and the ornate architecture left me in awe. I even got to witness a monk ceremony and it was such a peaceful and humbling experience. So four models there guys, each with a different tone, style, voice but all packed with features. And that's really what you need to try and do to answer question three successfully. And that's the end of the video. Let me know if it was useful in the comments below. I am going to do one final video for paper one tomorrow. I think it's going to have to be a top 10 tips video, but I'll, I'll get my thinking hat on and do a bit of brainstorming tomorrow. Film, edit, and put it on YouTube for all of you last minute revisers. So until next time or tomorrow, bye-bye.